Hello and welcome back to Sorting Algorithms Redux. You're watching episode 11, Merge Sort. In a previous episode of this show, we discussed merging. Merging is a very simple algorithm that basically just merges two sublists. These two sublists have to be sorted. And what merging will do is that it will selectively pull items out of each sublist to form a complete list that is still sorted. We're going to take advantage of this behavior to actually, well, sort an unsorted list. This method is called merge sort. This algorithm also relies on recursion by the way, so if you're not sure how recursion works, feel free to hop back to episode 7 and take a look. I like merge sort because it's really simple to explain. Here, take a look. What merge sort does first is to actually break up a list into many sublists. In fact, as many sublists as there are individual items. In fact, these sublists are lists of size 1. So basically what we're doing here is we're grabbing our unsorted list and just breaking it all up. Then, what's going to happen is each pair of neighboring sublists are going to be merged together. Remember that merging only works on sorted lists, but lists of size 1 are inherently sorted. When we merge these two lists of size 1 together, we get a list of size 2 that is sorted. We're going to repeat this for every pair. So what happens now is that we have a bunch of lists of size 2, all of which that are sorted. We are then going to repeat this. We're going to merge neighboring lists of size 2 together. And what we're going to obtain is a whole bunch of lists of size 4 that are sorted. I think you can kind of see where this is going. By remerging all the lists pair by pair, you will eventually get back your original list, except that it is sorted. And in fact, that is as simple as it gets. The premise behind merge sort is extremely simple. Just break up all the lists and merge them all back together. This of course takes advantage of the fact that merging gives you a sorted list. So how will we actually write the merge sort code? That's really simple. First, we check to see if the list has more than one element. This is the recursive case. If it does, we split the list into two and then call merge sort on each of these sublists. By the time merge sort has returned to this point, after any number of recursive calls, each sublist has already been sorted. In that case, we simply merge the two lists again to create an even larger sorted list. Of course, every recursive function needs a base case. For merge sort, this happens when the algorithm is told to sort a list of size 1. Nothing more needs to be done to the list since it cannot be split further, so no further copies of merge sort need to be called. So well, basically that is it for merge sort. Let us jump right into taking a look at its time complexity. Now, notice how merge sort doesn't actually change its behavior depending on the data that it's given. For example, if we take a look at quick sort, which we covered in a previous episode, Depending on the contents of the list, quicksort may do more or less passes. This is not the case for merge sort. Merge sort completely ignores what data you give it. It simply breaks it all down and merges it all back together, in the same way, regardless of what data you actually give it. This means of course that you could give merge sort a randomly sorted list, an inversely sorted list, or a sorted list. Merge sort doesn't care. It breaks everything up and merges it all back together either way. What this means is the best, average, and worst case time complexity for merge sort is exactly the same. That is n log n. So there you have it. That is merge sort in a nutshell. Now, if you were wondering what is the difference between quick sort and merge sort, why is it that, you know, in most cases, quick sort is actually preferred? Because of the way merge sort works, it creates a large number of recursive cases. Depending on the size of the list, this means that there could be many recursive calls going on. This of course takes up a lot of memory. This is as opposed to quick sort, which only does a recursive call when it's necessary, which is why in general, quick sort actually uses up less memory. Between merge sort and quick sort, debates are still going on as to which is better. In my opinion, merge sort is much easier to explain. Quick sort takes, you know, a little bit of extra thinking. However, it is worth mentioning that, you know, in most applications, quicksort is actually preferred. So there you have it. That basically wraps it up for this episode. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. 
If you like this video or found it helpful, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. Once again, that's all there is for this episode. Until next time, you are watching 0612TV.